division and the airport division of which uh, Transportation Director Greg Schnell oversees. So Greg, please start by giving a high-end snapshot of the, the Transportation Department. Well, thanks, Adam. Uh, it's, it's nice to come and speak to the summer stuff once in a while. We, uh, we always worry about winter, and, and that's always the focus, and that's what they think we do. But uh, in, our, in our department, uh, we're, we're involved in that in construction, the paving and that type of thing. So our department, the Highway Division, um, has uh, 86 people that are involved, including myself. And our Airport Division has three uh, full-time and one part-time staff. They take care of the, uh, the grounds out at the airport. My guys take care of the patching, the potholes. They go back to the plowing part of it. So we get a lot of stuff happening all at one time. And when did you get an airplane assigned to you to, to bring to work now? We just uh, signed a purchase order for that the other day, you so did. it should be coming. So your, your commute's <laughs> gone from, what, 25 minutes to two? That's correct. That's nice. <laughs> Uh, Greg's really picked up a lot of additional responsibility, and, and this has really been a theme of county government, as Roger knows, and certainly our county board and department heads know. Over the years, we've done a, a lot of streamlining, a fair amount of consolidating, and uh, actually there's been a half dozen or more departments that have consolidated, and the most recent, or at least one of the most recent, was the airport and the highway department to the transportation department, and Greg's done a great job overseeing that and obviously learning more about our airport operations, but we've, we've got a pretty experienced person who filled the shoes of uh, Chuck Mayer. Yes, Tom Boyer is our airport superintendent. He's uh, been a pilot for, I would say, 20-some years already. Um, he knows a lot about the, the regulations and of, of, of airport operations, so he keeps us in compliance that way and, and also has some aviation background, and, um, which gives him a, a great uh, amount of uh, experience to bring to the table. And how long now have you been with uh, Sheboygan County? I've been here, I'll be go seven years in October I'll be here. Um, it's been an uh, interesting ride. I enjoy it every day. Um, as part of my responsibilities, my responsibility and role is to provide great and, and reliable and safe transportation uh, for today and, and for the future. And um, I guess you can put that in the airport as well. I mean, they have a transportation infrastructure out there that we have to keep up with as well. So consolidating both uh, made, made a, a great amount of sense. And, you know, we're governed by one committee, so I think that's a great opportunity for us to uh, use both resources. And just, just how many roads of uh, county highways and... Uh, interstate and town roads are you and your staff helping maintain? We have 450 miles of county trunk highway. Um, we also maintain uh, 170 miles of state highway as well as 465 miles of township road. Um, so it's, it equates to centerline miles of over tw well over 2,200 miles or uh, lane miles 2,200 miles that we have to do that with. With we have um, 70, 73 people in the field that are taking care of the plowing. So there's a tremendous amount of responsibility to try to get around and and make sure everybody can get to work, to school, and to uh, little Johnny's basketball game. So say those numbers again: 450 miles of county trunk highways. That's correct. S 70 mile, or 170 miles of state road and 465 miles of township road. I wish more people knew this because when that snowstorm hits, I always find it rather remarkable how impatient some people can be about, well, I'm not plowed out yet. Uh, when you've got 86 staff, maybe half of which that are actually in the, in the snow plows and, and out there trying to remove this, that snow, uh, I think it's amazing that it gets done in a day or two, yet we have people who will call within a couple of hours and say, where are you? So, it was uh, interesting after we received the 17 inches of snow this, uh, in the late winter snowfall. Uh, by 8.30 that morning, we were getting calls, why can't I get out of my subdivision when we had, uh, we had some of our own trucks stuck in the middle of the roads and the interstate was blocked in certain places. So, yeah, the impatience part is uh, it's getting to be more and more of a challenge. Yeah, and of course, as government continues to streamline, as we see less resources for government operations, whether it's at the, the state level or the federal or the local level or the town level, Obviously, uh, we've been reducing our staff, not increasing them, so people need to be even more patient. Um, the highway department, now division, has seen some changes over the years during your tenure. Why don't you touch on some of that? The, uh, the original table organization when I started at the highway department was 125 staff. When I started, there was 117 uh, employees that were budgeted for to uh, be involved in the highway operations. As it stands today, as I mentioned earlier, we're at 86. So um, we've reduced uh, quite a few staff members, but we're still maintaining the same same uh, construction style, maintenance style that we had in the past. We may 
um, have changed some of our patterns as far as uh, grass cutting, that type of things, cut back on those maintenance uh, things, but we are trying to provide more paving, that type of construction work. We've also introduced GPS to our equipment um, so that we know where our vehicles are, our snowplow trucks uh, more so than anything else, that uh, when there is an emergency, we know where those people are. We can pick that up off of our phones or our computers. We've consolidated a shed. We've uh, closed the Adel shed in the southern, uh, southern part of Sheboygan County and combined that with our south side shed as well as the south uh, Cascade shed. So it's, we've been doing a lot of changes internally. Um, the reason we could get to the numbers we are is that we are consolidating just as we are departments, we're consolidating internally as well and adding more responsibilities to other employees. So it's been a, it's been a rocky road, but a good one. I think it's, it's proved it's, uh, uh, that we can get it done, we can still get the work done, and as long as we don't go much lower, we'll be in good shape. Yeah, yeah, and the change is just inevitable right now at all levels of government with the fiscal pressures that are there and, and the economy. It's nice to see the economy starting to come back a little bit, but all levels of government are struggling with uh, fiscal challenges. And I think you've been leading by example with your leadership and the excellent work at the highway department. It's a real credit to your, to your staff, you know, to go from 117 to 86 in five or six years, yet still maintain the level of service that you are and, and be a full service operation is really impressive. So it's, it's a real credit to your team. They're a good group of guys. The, um, the county, as you well know, but some people may not recognize, provides maintenance responsibilities for the state. We take care of the state interstate, as you touched on earlier. Please start with touching on what's the difference between a, a federal or a state highway, a county trunk highway, and a town road and then also come back and touch on, well, what is it that we do for the state? Okay. The, um, the, the simple answer to the question is, is anything that's numbered is a state highway, anything that's lettered is a, is a county highway, anything that's named is a township road. Um, the different levels of responsibility are driven by the average daily traffic. Obviously, we all know our state roads take more traffic than our county roads, and they know the county roads take more traffic than the town roads. So that's how they're, they're divided up, and that's why they have... Uh, there's different criteria as far as what type of uh, uh, cross-section or building they should be, how wide the pavement is, how, how uh, wide the shoulder is. So that's how that's, um, uh, that's how, the, 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 how you de define between the, the three entities. Um, as far as the maintenance that we provide for the uh, state of Wisconsin, it's, it's all their snow removal. Anything that pertains to the highway as far as patching, uh, shoulder work, litter pickup, um, signage, guardrail, you name it, anything that has to happen on that highway, we're taking care of it, whether it's ditching or uh, replacing culvert pipes, that's, those are underneath our responsibilities. Annually, we sign a routine maintenance agreement with the Department of Transportation, and that equates to about $2 million of our budget every year. Um, that, uh, when we do that, we're, we're applying 12 employees with the equipment, the county owns the equipment, and we charge the rent um, of our equipment to the state, and that's how we get reimbursed for our time and equipment. Um, so when they request a special project, whether it's paving, shouldering, we're there to do that. But other than that, it's, it's, the, it's strictly the maintenance of their highways. And final question before I turn it over to Roger, because I'm sure some of our viewers may be wondering this, and we certainly get the question from time to time, well, why is the county providing this service? I mean, uh, why doesn't the private sector provide more of these maintenance responsibilities to the state? Or could they do it more cost effectively? Or could they do it more cost effectively for the towns and the other uh, units of government you work with? How do you respond to that question? I believe that, um, well, the, to back up, the state of Wisconsin is the only state in the United States that uses county forces in order to do their maintenance work. So we, we are kind of unique in itself. Um, the state has provided many, many studies to see if, if we are, in fact, the more economical way of doing business. Um, and they have come back as a positive uh, for, for us to do that. Um, in most cases, I believe that the reliance of, of snow removal and gearing up for snow removal is one of the biggest hinging points for providing that service. Um, buying salt as a, as a large uh, a purchaser, using the state of Wisconsin to do that, you know, that gives us better opportunities to, to buy in bulk. Um, not having duplication of equipment and, and uh, uh, being able to have that agreement, the state has felt there's a lot of value to that, um, just as, as the same as the towns. Uh, 
So I hope I'm answering your question. And obviously we're not in the business to make a profit. Correct. We're in the business to cover our costs and provide safe, reliable transportation. But the other example you've given me in the past is we have our own um, gravel pit and we obviously produce our own asphalt. And if I recall correctly, you've shared in the past that if you look at what it takes us to produce that product and, and improve the you know, overlay or build a new road, we can do so uh, often, more often than not, at a more cost-effective price. Correct. The, uh, the advances that we've made in our asphalt plant, some of the improvements that we've made over the years have, have made us to be more cost-effective. Um, as a result of that, we can give that to the taxpayers as well in our county when we produce um, and, and pay for our townships, whether it's the state or, or the city or a, a township. Um, the idea of owning your own asphalt operations means you have the resources that you don't have to purchase that. And uh, so we crush our own material. We, uh, we uh, run it through our asphalt plant. We do pay royalties some places where we, where we have our asphalt plant. Um, but in the long run, we, when we roll all of our costs into there, on average, we're anywhere between 5 and $8 a ton cheaper coming off of the belt. And some of our projects are, for an overlay average, we're using 1,500 to 2,000 tons. On a, on, so it starts to add up when you're trying to get 20 miles of paving done in a year. So that cost or that savings is then put onto the taxpayers of, of Sheboygan County. That's not something they'd have to invest in otherwise. Very good. And that's something Chairman Distruti knows all too well as our county board chairman, as well as working for the town of Holland and, and their infrastructure. So I'll turn it over to you, Roger. Thank you, Adam. Uh, as Adam mentioned, after having served on the county board for a number of years and uh, before that on the town board and association, I got a, a unique uh, perspective of I can appreciate uh, all that the uh, county highway department does and uh, sure can appreciate it. But why don't you explain some of the benefits uh, that the county provides services to the state, town, and village? I know you touched on it uh, somewhat before, but. Uh, that, it, for instance, we not only the cities, towns, and villages, but also uh, school systems, if they need uh, uh, black topping done on their parking lot, another uh, taxing unit you can do services for too, correct? correct? As long as it's in the public school system, we we're able to perform uh, services for them as well. Um, some of the uh, uh, going back to providing the benefit and providing the service has to do with, as I mentioned earlier, duplication of services. Uh, when you look at uh, Sheboygan County and the makeup that we have currently, we're re I think we have 15 townships. We're responsible for 11 of those townships as far as their maintenance services go. They have um, limited funds to work with for their transportation. When they get transportation aids, they get a certain amount of money. On the average, they get maybe 100, 100 and some thousand dollars a year based on their lane miles. If you took an ad, added a staff member or more equipment and they'd had to have buildings, um, their transportation aids wouldn't go nearly as far as just paying for somebody by the hour when you need it and then they're gone. You don't have to worry about providing that benefit, maintaining those buildings, having your own salt shed, um, trying to have all those extra things that go along with it. You guys or the townships rely on us to have that stuff when needed and that's the service that we provide and I, I believe in just uh, in the last few months I've been working with contracts with the townships that we uh, are taking care of and we're looking at having a three-year contract. Um, so far the feedback I've been getting is that they have they feel there's a great value in what we're doing and they don't want to go down the path of, of having their own equipment and sheds and, and, and the like of that. And part of that efficiency is that same truck that plows the snow in the winter is used for hauling the blacktop and gravel material around and other construction activities. So it's, it's used year round. So that's, uh, I'm sure, one of the benefits there that's too. That's correct. Puts a little pressure on us at the end of the year when, there's, uh, when, you're, when you're transforming from the summer ops to the winter ops. Mm -hmm. There is only two seasons in highway work. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, you mentioned about the uh, the asphalt. That's a, a big uh, cost, and the the material uh, is the the blacktop and the oil used for it is a, is push the cost. But I know there's several things that you've done in the last few years to uh, keep that cost down as much as possible. Would you explain to the viewers what a couple of those are? I'd love to. Um, back in 2008, we had uh, added a 
it's kind of a strange term, but it's called a bag house. And the bag house is it, it, it takes the um, the small P200s, it's a, it's a dust-like, and it brings it out of the material. I don't want to get too technical, but it does help us become more environmentally safe. We have certain regulations that we have to live up to with the DNR standards, so that helped us. That was a, a big plus for us. Um, after that, we went and added a, um, a wrap system. It's a recycled asphalt program where anything that we take off the road in asphalt, we'll bring it back to the plant, and we'll run it back through the crusher, and run it back through the, um, the asphalt operation, which then we're reusing the oil that's in there as well as the aggregate, so we don't have to introduce as much virgin oil, which we believe we saved probably anywhere between two to four and a half dollars a ton so far just on the asphalt alone. As we speak today, we are introducing LP or the liquid propane and we're putting the tanks in versus burning diesel fuel, and that should save us, uh, I think the difference is about three bucks a gallon um, diesel versus versus using the LP. So that again will be savings that will be added on to us as taxpayers in the future. Making those small improvements will, will go a long ways in protecting the 450 miles of county trunk and the 465 miles of town road. Uh, besides using the uh, the tax levy for funding the operations and the maintenance of the roads uh, what are some of your other sources? Uh, what helps pay for some of these roads? There's a, um, a program that's called a Local Road Improvement Program that's provided by the Department of Transportation, and that's an every, every other year cycle. So we can apply for those funds. Um, there's, there's so many dollars allotted for our region, which includes the Lakeshore counties. Um, that's one level. There's like the CMAC is a, is a federal, that's a, a federal fund. That's uh, for lakeshore areas for congestion mitigation so we can uh, eliminate some of that congestion and, and help that out. And then when, for our federal highways, which a lot of the townships uh, road don't fall under, uh, then we can go with the STP program, which is a surface transportation program. And that also is a four to six year program where we can apply for federal funds in order to get some of our higher volume uh, county trunks built to the standards that they'd like to see and that'd be the, the, the major collectors, the ones that are receiving any more, more than uh, 1,200 cars a day. And I know there have been in the last two years there's been some state law changes uh, that affect the county operations and how the, uh, the different municipalities, your customers can bid some of those. Uh, would you explain some of that uh, to the viewers? Sure. Um, highway departments um, across the state have, are eliminated from performing improvement type projects for cities with a population of greater than 5,000. Um, an improvement is basically, we couldn't come in and do a block of reconstruction of ripping out the concrete, regrading, and putting in new asphalt. Um, uh, the maintenance types, such as uh, crack filling, center lining, those types of operations, we can still do those. There's also a stipulation with, um, with the um, uh, prevailing wage that the, if the project is over a certain threshold, if it's over um, $100,000, then we'd have to apply for uh, prevailing wage. Uh, if it's going to go to a contractor, then the threshold changes to 234000 So there's, there is some of those laws that, that we have to be mindful of when we're, when we're working on projects like that. Uh, what are the different procedures you use to uh, develop a construction project uh, or maintenance like the um, seal coating or crack filling, for instance? When we repave a road uh, with, an, with a, basically an overlay, we're looking at a 10-year uh, surface that, that we feel that we're going to get out of there with some minor crack filling in order to protect that and let, not let the water allow into in between the two layers. After that 10-year surface, we'll start looking at it and we may then apply a seal coat where we can get another five to seven years out of it um, in order to protect it before we have to do anything more major than that. A lot of times what drives that is the, uh, what, what the traffic is. If there's a large dairy, uh, large construction going on, that can play some different uh, havoc with our roads. That's for the overlays. We'll, we'll look back at our, at our PASER system. It's a system that the DOT has supplied us with that we can rate our roads, and we'll base some of those decisions on what the rating is, when the last time it was, has received a surface um, uh, on it, and then we'll build from there. If there's excessive cracking, we may know we have base issues and drainage issues. That leads us down a different path. Before we start putting the asphalt on, we're going to want to get that stuff cleaned up um, in order to protect the surfaces in the future. Water's our worst enemy, so we want to keep that flowing. And uh, what are some of the primary uh, road projects uh, that are happening uh, on the t uh, county roads and uh, 
maybe even touch on uh, some of the state roads that affect uh, some of the people driving through our county. There's lots of activity happening in this county this year. Uh, State Highway 57 from one end of the county to the other is going to get resurfaced. So they'll be out there doing milling and then repaving. It's going to be all done underneath traffic, but it's going to be, you got to expect some delays because they're going to be using flag people. State Highway 32 um, from Falls to Howard's Grove is going to be milled and overlaid as well. There's also the non-motorized projects that are happening in Falls and I believe in Plymouth this year that are um, are going to be happening within the next month. County Trunk OK um, from Camelot to Whedon Creek Road or tr uh, County Trunk EE is going to be rebuilt, which is starting on Monday. Uh, Eisner Avenue is happening by the city. Um, we're building County Trunk J to two mile stretch from Highland Road to County Trunk M. Um, we're in the middle of a Betterman project on County Trunk U from 57 to 28. So there's a lots and lots of activity happening. A lot of orange trucks, a lot of barrels, and a lot of asphalt happening throughout the county. Oh, and and uh, thank you, Greg, for all that you and your crew do for uh, keeping our roads safe for our, our public. Thank you. Last year, uh, Roger and I got a couple of calls from some residents in the Random Lake area in particular with the 57 work being done, and I think you got dozens of calls. and. Unfortunately, you know, residents here, they don't know if the highway department's doing the work or the public works department or the private sector is. And with Highway 57, that work's being done by a, a private sector That's contractor, correct. contract, yes. right? Yep. And so in those situations, if, you know, they don't feel they were notified or there's barricades up or whatever it may be, what's the best way for people to share their concerns or, or get their concerns addressed if it's not the county doing the work? They can always call us and we will, we will steer them in the right direction to get the hold of the contractor that is responsible. Typically on those state jobs there is a, a project engineer who fields all those calls and, and addresses those concerns whether it's you can't get to your mailbox or you have other issues going on, they will address those for you. Okay. And is there a regular uh, county highway department phone number that you readily give out or they can go to the website both what do you prefer it's there it's both they can they can shoot us an email if that's easier for them if they're passing through they can call our our, our, um, our regular office numbers if it's after hours you can call the sheriff's department they have all the general contact numbers for the contractors or they will call one of our people that are on call 24 hours very good and kind of going back to to the beginning where we started here you're talking about two divisions now a highway division an airport Obviously, you're helping oversee both those areas. A lot of money's going into these two particular areas, and I didn't ask you that question early on. Just what is the budget for the highway operations, and what's the budget for the airport operations? Our um, tax levy budget for the for the highway op division is uh, about 4.3 million dollars, and it's 18 million dollars total with re revenues and, and expenditures. The um, so airport 4.3 million of property tax levy, correct? But a total of 18 million. Yep. So it gets back to Roger's point earlier. There's a lot of state and federal funds flowing in and out as well. Correct. And the airport relies on just shy of $200,000 in, in uh, levy and it's a $400,000 budget. So their revenues are, are gained by uh, fuel flowage and, and the rent that we receive for the properties out there. And turning to the airport a little bit, we just have a few minutes remaining. We predominantly focused on the, the highway department operations or uh, the work being done out in the field. But Tell us a little bit about the airport. Uh, just how large is this, is this airport? What happens out there? Because if you haven't been to the Sheboygan County Memorial Airport, uh, you ought to go out there and take a look. This airport is one of the nicest in the state, and there's a lot of activity out there that I think some people in this community just don't recognize. It's kind of a jewel back there. It is. It's a, it's a nice piece of property. It's just over 1,000 acres, uh, 200 of which we rent out to, for egg uh, usage. Um, but it's, it's maintained by uh, three full-time guys that um, cut the grass, make sure the fence is operating properly. Um, it's one that's, I think it's the seventh out of 14 um, busiest general aviation airports in the state. Um, so there's lots of activity. I think it's 60,000 uh, operations annually, um, which equates to a lot of stuff. Um, our responsibility out there is just to re make sure that the snow is removed, the grounds are taken care of, the fences are properly working, and to communicate with the re uh, re uh, tenants that are on the grounds. And to plow those uh, landing areas to make sure people can come and go. 60, 65,000 flight operations annually supporting the Kohler Company and many other 
incredibly important businesses that help drive our, our area and employ people. Again, very, very important work. Yes, it is. It's, uh, I think that's one of the, the biggest uh, things that the airport presents to this community is the economic value of, of, of what goes in and out of there on an annual basis. Uh, I, I think the number was like $27 million in, in, um, in state and local taxes that come back to, to help uh, keep that facility up and running. And, and uh, it's not directly related to the the budget up, but it's it helps the full economy. I believe drive that's our what, economy absolutely. Yep. And you talked about a number of highway uh, projects that are coming up in play. Uh, what about at the airport? I know that we've had some extensions of the runways. Anything on the near horizon? Um, as we speak, we're preparing the bid package for um, the apron area in front of the Aviation Heritage Center. It's an old, uh, I think it's a 30 plus year old piece of pavement that's cracking up and uh, some of the seal code that was, uh, was applied is starting to pop off. So that will be constructed this year if the governor signs off on the funding, which it sounds like he's going to. Um, and then from there we're going to start looking, stepping back and looking at some of those pavements that are 20 to 30 plus years old over by all the hangars that are starting to fail that need to get done. So we're putting together a petition package for the, uh, for the state, the, the, the BOA, so that we can continue to maintain our jewel. And the general number is that uh, 3822 or 3825? 3822. 3822. Well, I hope you got an appreciation and just a little snapshot of the broad roles and responsibilities of the Transportation Department. But uh, if you want to learn more or you have suggestions for improvement, uh, we certainly want to hear them or hear from you. And don't hesitate to contact Greg or his staff. He has some excellent support staff that answer the phones and certainly will get questions to him if they can't answer them themselves. 459-3822. That's correct. 459-3822 is the number to call. Otherwise, we have a county website email, all sorts of opportunities to get information to us or again, offer suggestions, raise questions. Greg, thanks for joining us today. Good information. Thank you. Appreciate it. And thank you for joining us today. Next month, we're going to have a new, one of our newest department heads join us, John Dolson. He's the newly elected county clerk, took uh, Julie Glancy's position and had some tremendous shoes to fill there, but I think John's been doing a good job and he's going to talk a little bit about the important roles and responsibilities of the county clerk's office, which really acts as the key secretarial uh, support area for Roger and the full county board, as well as handles our elections. You can get your passport, uh, a lot of important responsibilities. So until next month, thanks for joining us.